Dynamic Disc Designs introduces a more realistic spinal disc model, model number LXH. Its features can demonstrate over 20 pathological states. With a now see-through L4, patients and doctors can now see the disc in a superior way. With an annular tear, compressive loads can now demonstrate nuclear migration, posterior nuclear migration, most commonly posterior lateral, and nerve root encroachment. Facet approximation can now be felt with the anterior disc resistance Encroachment syndromes, laterally and centrally, can now be demonstrated. With a carefully constructed two-part intervertebral disc, starting with the proper colors, the proper angles of the annular fibers, and the much-needed different drawmeter readings of the annulus versus the nucleus, this disc model can now perform more closely like the real thing. With the research continuously unveiling the hydraulic nature of the intervertebral disc, end plate pores are an important concept, nutritional root for the intervertebral disc. Here represented at a higher concentration at the nuclear interface and the hyaline cartilage also demonstrated. The nucleus and the annulus are represented in a convex and concave nature with details from histological sections. With a mobile spinal cord, resistance can be felt as the disc pushes posteriorly. A dynamic lumbar disc model. A first demonstrate over 20 pathological conditions associated with the intervertebral disc. Helping patients to understand more clearly their low back pain in the pursuit for solutions. Put the power of understanding in your patient's hands with the most realistic disc spinal models available. Yes. This model can be very helpful in speeding up doctor-patient communication, um, demonstrating uh, positive orthopedic tests. Like nerve tension tests, for example, SLR, view through the spinal canal can demonstrate nuclear herniation taking up space in the spinal canal, as well as posterior disc bulge taking up AP diameter. Importantly, getting patients to understand intolerances will be helpful for rehabilitation purposes. With this more realistic spinal disc model, demonstrate how neutral loading does not cause as much posterior migration of the nucleus, but under flexion loading, migration occurs. Demonstrate positive orthopedic tests like Kemp's through facet approximation. Demonstrate disc height loss in the process of a dehydrating nucleus in the process of aging. This model will save you time in clinical settings. 
With this dynamic model, you can demonstrate disc bulge dynamically. Get patients to feel what it takes to bulge the disc. You can demonstrate mechanical mechanisms, whether it's antalgia, long track signs. You can, they can understand the compression on the cauda equina. You can both also demonstrate surgical and therapeutic strategies in the pursuit of finding proper solutions. So flexion extension, McKinsey protocols, Cox flexion, decompression, and a multitude of others. When going over patient reports, whether they're x-ray, CT, MRI, use this model to allow the patient to understand clearly what a disc bulge is, what a disc herniation is, what lateral encroachment means, what it means to have disc height loss, what it means to have nerve root compression. As a researcher of intervertebral discs, I've used over 250 scientific references in the construction of this model. I have also recently traveled to Scotland using upright MRI, getting to know the hydraulic nature of the intervertebral disc and how dynamic it really is. Ultimately, this model is what a lumbar model should be. Dynamic, interactive, and most importantly, more like the real thing.